then uh, I'll share the five-year plan, Jeff. You might speak to it. by fund balance category. Let me just highlight this one. This is the one that we're most concerned about and the one that we manage from a fiscal health standpoint. The other ones are fund balances for like operating capital, student activities, and so on. So FY23, we ended at a, with a deficit fund balance of 102350 and we went through and we revised the FY24 budget and tightened things up as much as we could. Um, and it looks like we will end FY24 if we can hit our budget at a, a fund balance of 84862 And then we factored in adjustments of 750000 budget cuts. Um, which would get us to a fund balance of $625,004 in FY25, and we grow by about $400,000 in FY26, and about $300,000, like not quite in FY27. So this assumes that we're losing roughly 3 to 4% of our enrollment each year, which is 10 to 15 kids. Um, it factors in the state aid. Um, increases of 2% each year in 25 through 27. It could be more than that, but the state did in the last legislative session guarantee that we'll get at least a 2% increase on our formula allowance. So that's the state aid that we generate for each student we serve. Um, I don't know if you just want to get an idea of the detail. We did this by account code. Um, starting with our FY24 budget and projecting forward. Um, we know what our FY24 and our FY25 levy will be. Um, just to give you an idea, a lot of our property taxes are driven by our enrollment, so they've, they've been reduced by about 4%, which equates to our student enrollment loss projected for 26 and 27. Um, the other big numbers are like our student aid or our formula aid, that's this line. And so we have it growing by 2%, less about 100,000 for our students that we're losing each year. Uh, special ed, the cross subsidy aid um, is a new revenue item in FY24, and that goes from 40% of the unfunded amount um, up to 50%, I believe, in FY25. So we're bumping that up a bit. Otherwise, just um, holding revenues pretty flat is typically the, the scenario. And then we have increases across the board, um, tweaking some things for like building and buildings and grounds equipment, um, cutting back on the spending on some of that, those types of items as we can, and so forth. So uh, basically that gets us to our projection here, which which is really where we want to be going. Um, up in this million to 1.3 million range is, is where we want to be to just to see like what is that from a fund balance percentage standpoint. Yeah, so in that 10% range. Any 
questions on that? Anything I missed, Jeff or Shimon? This does assume too that we would shift our dollars that the district set aside years ago for separation and severance. We would uncommit that and move that into unassigned in FY24. So that would take board action. But what's happened is those dollars haven't been actually, it hasn't been taken out of that fund balance over the years as we've paid out severance. Essentially, it's come out of here. So and I think it just makes sense, and we've talked about this, just to shift it up to unassigned and um, help us stay out of the SOD and FY24. That's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if anybody has any questions, comments. Hi, uh, Todd, Tim Lyon, board member. Uh, is the assumption about declining enrollment an average of what's come over the last decade, or is that something that applies uh, because of what we're our census operations are looking at here. Is that maybe I can ask that to Jeff too? I looked at the last couple of years in terms of what we've been losing, and it's been in that ten to fifteen range. Um, so that's what I went with. Um, I did not look at census data for enrollment for this projection. Um, we can easily adjust that if we want to use a different different number. Okay, and you were also, as long as I got the floor, you were also uh, uh, doing calculations there to give me a percentage on the fund balance. Uh, I'm just doing the math in my head, but you talked about uh, FY27, we're looking at about a 13%. Uh, is that what I saw? Yeah. The numbers? I forgot I had columns in here. That's why my math wasn't working great. I mean, That's fine. I'm just looking at round numbers there, but... So FY27, hopefully we're up to about 13% again, which I think is where we're sort of motivated to get to. We're talking 15% here in the next four to five years. Yeah, it's actually um, 20%, 16% in 26, and 25 we'd be at... Okay, thank you. Yeah. So this includes with the, with this all the budget cuts, all the shifts from some of our um, reserve funds that we did this current fiscal year. Yeah, so what, what we are looking at doing, if I heard the question right, we are utilizing some of our operating capital dollars um, towards our tech position, I believe. Is that right, Sheena? Um, and then we're also using some of our LTFM dollars. Some of those can go towards our buildings and grounds director, or whoever's helping plan and manage any um, facility improvements or repairs and maintenance, identifying our LTFM needs. So, fifty thousand out of capital and twenty-five thousand out of LTFM. Um, and you can see we're able to sustain our capital at about twenty-six thousand in LTFM. 
it's kind of a gradual decline, but still a decent balance at 200,000. if it helps, but operating capital is used for things like technology. Um, it can go towards, towards technology staff as well, textbooks, furniture and equipment, things like that. LTFM is, is kind of earmarked for facility renovations, improvements, maintaining the, the buildings. Guess what typically goes in the unassigned? So unassigned is that's basically all our teachers, um, instructional supplies, kind of all other operating costs that aren't, you know, that we can't specifically code here. Basically, these types of revenue streams um, come with strings attached, so they're restricted um, in terms of how we can use them. And the unassigned is all like the formula of revenue that 7138 per student, that's all unassigned. We can use how we want. Um, federal grants are unassigned. All our local revenues are unassigned. So that's what funds um, all of our staff, the majority of our staff, and other operations, electricity, transportation, special ed. I also assume these numbers aren't taken into account, like we need uh, this, all the windows in the school need to be replaced and a uh, no, no, number of other maintenance type issues. Uh, it, was that taken into account or no? No, it was not. Okay. That sounds like a pretty big project. That's probably something that you know, need to be bonded for probably outside of the general operations. The LTFL money can handle some of that, but not, not all of that. Okay. Eventually, will we have to put funds back in there? Eventually, would we have to put funds back into the committed for separation, or are we just eliminating that? We would just eliminate eliminate that. There's no requirement to set funds aside for that. It would just come out of unassigned in the future, um, as it has in the past. Even though we've had the dollars sitting here, they've actually come out of unassigned. Excuse me, so that that would be included in the budget. It would have to be a budget line item. Uh, you said that would have to be a budget line item. That's correct, yeah. I thought there was a state demand of some sort that we had to set aside for separation. Is that not not the case? No, no, that's not true. Okay. No. When you, I mean, when you have a healthy fund balance and you're looking at healthy, meaning unassigned is in good shape and you're at your fund balance goal, you know, that would be a time to set aside for things that you know you're going to have in the future. So that that was likely the attempt in 10, 10 years ago or whenever that was done. I know we went back five or six years and it just has, has remained unchanged over that period. So I think that was the idea. And when that was established, it was taken out of unassigned and moved here or simply moving it back. Any other questions? So I don't know if you can answer it tonight, but I think what we're looking at as we move forward is um, the possibility of either an operating levy or a capital projects levy um, specifically to cover our technology expenses and that type of thing. Um, looking at the numbers here, what at some point we need to come up with what do, if we do go to the voters, what would be an appropriate amount to ask for? Um, I think the scenarios that we ran were three and four hundred thousand, thinking that's kind of what our IT expenses are, which we've kind of frozen for this year. Um, 
So I don't know if you have an opinion. I know you and I didn't get a chance to talk today on any of this, so I'm just kind of springing that on. And if you're not comfortable answering it, that would be something for a later meeting is kind of coming up with, um, with all the cuts that we're doing to get through next year. What do we want to do in the future so we can have computers and technology for kids and um, and that type of thing. So, Jeff, are you directing that question at me? Yep. Um, so one of the things, I mean, it's hard to get to the detail on here a little bit. Let me see what I can do. So you can see the spending on some of these tech items in this, in this assumption to get to, to achieve the fund balance we're trying to get to. We, we are cutting like buildings and grounds equipment, um, cutting technology, spending in half. Um, so there are, and then we're also using operating capital to fund our tech position. So by by getting a capital project levy that would allow those funds to go to cover those things and, and do all the things from a technology standpoint in the classroom that you would like to do and not take it out of operating capital so it free up capital dollars to buy textbooks and instructional software and those types of things. Um, and I believe we also made reductions to other types of online instructional software and so forth. So those types of things would be covered by a capital project levy. So yeah, this, I mean, there's reductions in here to just general supplies as well. Um, instructional supplies and general supplies, given our enrollment is declining, the thought is we would hold those budgets steady. These are things we can, we can set and try to adhere to. Um, but you know, any, any type of funding that would free up dollars from that's being spent out of the unassigned, um, now instead of spending those out of unassigned, those could go towards instructional materials and those types of things. So even though you're not allowed to use capital projects only for that type of thing, it would free up dollars so that we could have, have funds to do that. Fiscal year 23 yes, appearances and re revenue, uh, those are actual numbers, not the, the budgets, right? So I started with the FY24 revised budget here. Oh, I, I did bring in FY23 final into this okay, on your scenario. Okay. Where is oh, FY23 here. Yeah. Yeah, this is, these are the actual FY23 ending fund balances. This is Todd Netsky from SMS. This, this is who we contract to. Yeah. And Sheena is, is our business manager. Well, this is our what, second year with SMS or third? Is it third? I was going to say two and a half. Two and a half years. That's the number I throw out there. Is there greater confidence in the budget numbers this year, next year? <laughs> Well, let Todd answer that. Todd, are there better confidence uh, after all this going through that the budget numbers for this year and next year are looking for are high confidence numbers? Yes. We've gone through every budget code in detail, line item by line item. So, um, you know, as long as we monitor those budgets and say no when we're at the budget, 
um, if you look within those budgets, these will be, you know, there's some big assumptions involved, but they should be um, on the mark in the ballpark. Anything be set aside for a contingency in this budget or the, the going forward, your, your projections here? So there's no contingency like line item, if you will, built into the budget. Sometimes uh, business managers do, you know, stick, stick aside a $100,000 contingency or something like that. Given how tight our budget is, um, instead we just Again, budgeted in great detail by line item. And I mean, our contingency is our fund balance here, essentially. So um, we need to monitor the budget, make sure we're living within the budget, monitor our revenue, um, our enrollment, and make adjustments to our, our spending if, you know, if our decline is greater than what we're anticipating. So um, we have assumptions for negotiation and settlements as well in the future. So if we can stay within those assumptions, then you know we'll have to make cuts elsewhere again as well. That's your question, Woody? It does, but our contingency right now is our line of credit. Once June 30th hits, we're going to lose that. We won't have it anymore. Then what's going to happen? Uh, say say we, we have a problem with the boiler. Say we have to do something that's going to cost so that's something that I'll be working with Matt Ellers and Todd. You can chime in too. Um, aid anticipation borrowing. You're going to have to say that again. Yeah. Aid anticipation borrowing um, is a is a tool that schools Todd, use. Did you have a question? Yeah. I did not. No. He, he was asking about uh, if there was a problem with uh, the boilers or a large expense uh, came up unexpectedly and our line of credit is expiring uh, here shortly, uh, what would then be the contingency? Um, I, I believe Jeff kind of gave him an answer for it, though, but that was what the question was. If you want to expound on it, feel free. So schools do have a cash flow uh, remedy mechanism available to them, the aid anticipation borrowing certificates, and that allows us to borrow money um, at a, at a pretty low rate of return um, or in terms of interest. Um, there's a cost for the legal and the, um, the financial advisor for issuing those on our behalf. But um, and the, the um, payback on that is always scheduled ahead of when you potentially would want to, or actually after when you could re-borrow. Really so, if you were in a crunch to pay back what you had borrowed, you're borrowing the second year prior to having to pay that back. So basically it, it allows you to get back on your feet and make sure you're able to make payroll and pay your bills um, while you're rebuilding that fund balance. Answer your question. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's satisfied with that. Todd? Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. Sheena, are you going to stay in on the meeting? Or? Um, if you need me to, it's up to you. SMS does have a history with the school. Um, 
when I first came on the board, um, they had Emily Turner Parsley in the position as business office manager, and she was also an SMS employee. Yes, it's it's, it's not for schools. It's that's not what it's called. Um, these, guys, these guys have it. Yes, and we have it. It's faithful performance of duty. Is is what we're looking at right now. Um, it won't recoup all of the dollars that lost for some of the things that happened, um, but we can possibly get some of it right. back. So it's a, it's a drawn out process so working with insurance. That'd be going after well, it's our insurance would go after their insurance. You know how that works. So, yeah. So. They were part of the issue right? Well, we were man. They were managing the personnel. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's under their purview. I doubt they have insurance. Yes. Yes. The contract that we drew, draw up with them, and I don't have it available in my computer unless I look really hard, but they offer up sort of a percentage deal where, where they're saying, okay, we will assume 80% or something of the responsibilities for uh, daily budgeting. And is that right, Jeff, I, if I'm misrepresenting yep. that? But so they've assumed, and I think it was, you know, it's the, it's the lion's share of the, uh, of the responsibility. So yes, they're doing. 80% of our budgeting work, you know, which is what he's doing right there. So we're actively pursuing recovering some of those funds from theirs. Yes. yes. Yeah. Are we contractually obligated to them, and that's why we're still doing business with them? It's a difficult, you know, my, my, and I did call MSBA about that, say how many, but they said it's a very limited, uh, it's specific to the state of Minnesota. And there's one other company, I think, that you guys did a search, or Sheena yep. did a search looking for that. There was one other company, and in that effort, uh, we were told that they were not taking new customers. It's a lot like the audit companies. You go out for bids, and you get one bid back, you know, that kind of thing. So there's a little bit of hands tied on that. And he's done quite a bit to try to correct some of the stuff that went wrong last time, uh, you know, in terms of his budget calculations. And, uh, again, you can hear it in his voice when he's... Uh, on there, you know, he, he's. I think he's much more comfortable with this because he has done a very scrutinized effort on our budget specifically because it did not go well the last time around. Uh, so he's taking a little bit of that that blame. I mean, he did that in a public meeting here. Uh, financially, I think he's also accepted some of that blame because he reduced the rate of our contract. You know, this coming year. So there's. There's an acknowledgement there that he's they did something wrong, yes. And I think that's the question, but I think they're working also hard to correct that stuff. And I don't, it, the alternatives, like you heard Lynn talking about, uh, it's not like you go hire somebody in the newspaper, say, we've got somebody in the community, school finance is a really difficult creature. And you know that. You've had your nose in like the forestry stuff and things like that. It's a little bit different than just having an accountant come in and run your books for you. And our new manager has done a very good job. Mm -hmm. She's very detailed, yeah, very documented. I didn't anticipate the budget report. I was happy that came in okay. sooner than expected, so that's why I wasn't on the discussion items. I'm not calling it agenda because it's more of a discussion thing. Yep. Um, and what I thought 
Um, and we're not going to have all the answers tonight, but um, trying to work through the process that the board wants to use to determine, A, do we want to go to the voters and ask for dollars to work on our some of our facility needs that are Jeff, above and beyond? more into your mic. Sorry. We have people in the I'm back. I'm sorry, Florian, I apologize. <laughs> I'll stand up here and I'll there face you. you. How's that sound? We'll so, it. yeah, don't do that. So, what was I saying? <laughs> Next steps. Next steps. What uh, do you want to do with? So, I. As far as some of the f facility needs, is that? Help? Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, oh, yeah, but, yeah, so deciding what, like with the facility assessment that WIDSAF did, um, there's about $7 million worth of projects. Um, I don't think all of them have to be included on a referendum. Some of those can be part of our LTFM um, dollars that comes in, but the LTFM dollars is not going to cover all of our needs. Um, so if they determine how long do we want to have and what he can attest to the windows, the condition of some of the windows over almost 30 years, of, you know, wear and tear, um, how do we want to replace that? Right now we've got about half the windows in working condition. No. And we have how many, 800 and how many windows do we have? I think it was 134 operators. Okay. And a bunch of stationary. It's quite a few. So... You piecemeal that, you fix it a few at a time. Um, there's added costs when you do it that way, or is it better to... Actually, when I surveyed the windows, I wrote up yep. the windows in the kindergarten was being used. Yep. And the board acted on it to replace them. And we do have some other windows that are getting towards that point. Mm -hmm. And that's one way to do it, is piecemeal like piecemeal. Yep. The other way is you might get a, a less expensive deal by going with a window provider, window factory, just having them do it. No. So another need that we're looking at is uh, the driveway, the bus lane. Um, if you walk in, you can see the side, the conditions of the sidewalks, and we've been patching and repairing as time goes. Um, that might be something that we want to, or eventually going to have to do something with. Um, also with the drop off on the north side, um, having uh, sidewalks and curbing there would be a, more safer for the kids going out to the vehicles. Um, so those are just some of the examples that are in that assessment. And at some point we have to look through and say, are there some needs in here that we need to go to the voters to ask for dollars to pay for it? Or are we going to spread it out over years? One other big one I'll get on record is uh, the brickwork. Uh, there's problems with the brickwork. Tuck so pointing, yep. In my mind, the windows and the brickwork, you can kick them down the road, but yep. you're going to end up paying maybe even more if you keep doing that. So, so that's one piece of it. We've also so talked about, and Todd referenced the, the capital projects levy, um, and that's to bring back some of the technology <coughs> so we can continue to offer that. Um, we can also use it for replacing our buses. We've, we've frozen replacing our buses. Uh, that's about $100,000 a bus. And I don't, I think uh, John reported on some of the mileage. And, it, you know, Dale, you can attest where we can hold out till 2027. Yeah, but that. So that's another thing that we need to start looking at because you can only not replace a bus for so long and then you start having problems that are going to cost you more. So that's another thing that that capital projects levy can be used for is for vehicle and bus purchases. Um, and then the other one is the operating levy. And that, those are dollars um, that go right into the general fund. And um, as the board saw with uh, Matt's uh, presentation and and the, the dollars, uh, the operating levy is a lot more impactful on the local tax burden because of 
it eliminates some of the the rec properties. Um, but those are the funds that go into the general fund. You can use them for anything. Um, example, uh, we're looking at um, counseling's come up a few times, and that's one of our cuts that we have to make. Um, and there's different counseling. It doesn't have to be a social worker, but that's that could be a comeback with an operating levy if you want to replace some of the positions. Um, we're reducing some paras um, in school readiness um, and looking at ways that we can serve all the kids, um, but it will be different than what we've done in the past. So that would be something else that those dollars could go towards. Um, and those are just a few examples. Um, so I guess tonight was just intended to start the discussion on how do we want to attack this, because we're talking about three big things here. Um, and that was kind of the outline that I put there. So this was just a suggestion for discussion. Um, I did send out an article, um, and I didn't bring my notes um, that Corinne had sent. It's in an email um, that talked about having a uh, unified vision with the board and an administration that you share with the, with the public. Um, and we haven't sat down as a group and went through the facility assessment and weighed in on what do we think is priority, what do we want to present to the public. So I think that's kind of what we need to decide how we want to address that. Um, I have the, the last meeting I sent out um, information on some of those deadlines. Um, if we want to do any type of referendum, um, by the May school board meeting is when we need to decide what referendums we're going to ask and so that they can do the process to getting things in for review and comment and that type of thing. It's on, the on, website. Website. on the website. Yeah. Under public notices, I believe. It, I, I believe the whole assessment is out there. Because it should be in the working session back at 2, right? It's, it's, if you it's on the website. Yeah. It's, it's, if you go to the school board section, <clears throat> go to board meetings, it's every board meeting minutes, and well, you can probably explain better. <laughs> you want to talk specifically about what Ellers is offering to do for us at the cost of about twenty nine hundred dollars? Okay. For twenty eight hundred dollars. He's going to get his. He grabbed the wrong stack of papers to bring to the meeting, so. Well, so he wants to know if we want to have big group sessions to work on everything or break into like two and one works on operating and one works on capital. Or should we do it all together? That's it. Let's do it all together if we can. In the, dividing it up over the. Like into committees, kind of. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that then you've got to come back and have the discussion again. You might as well have it right all there. Together. In the, in the uh, in the large room, so to speak, or the mm -hmm. combined room. And I think too, I guess the way I'd go about it, like on there, we had it all broken out. Um, like his expanded one, when he went in the uh, the expenditures and revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see have we put just the real numbers from those same items for fiscal year twenty three. And then we should be able to have a pretty good projection going forward. And we should be able to do the math fairly easily to figure out 
what size of referendums we need for each item. And I would think, too, to look at, look at a long-range financial plan with if each of these referendums were passed. Yep. What the cost would be in interest and that sort of thing versus, you know, the additional revenue that we would get per student or, you know. Yep. And particularly if you would get into the, the large referendum for the building improvements, you know, that's going to... That's going to increase our revenue, but it's also going to increase our expense significantly to make those debt payments, interest and debt. While you were gone, Jeff, we okay. kind of decided that uh, rather than break up from the committees, we figured, well, as we'll just tackle okay. them all. As a, as a group, that way we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It, it's just as long as everyone doesn't expect, a, if you come here, it's open to the public, but this is more of a discussion thing, so it's not presented in a way that's, we have all our numbers in it. This is just an open discussion for the board um, to have the conversation. So it's not meant to be a formal board meeting with specific data and information. It's more of a just opportunity that's what a working session is is for you guys to talk about ask questions if you need me to look up information it's very informal uh, when we put the mic up and start talking in into things and getting questions you know that expectation might change a little bit you know but I just want to clarify so that this is not going to be a polished presentation like what it would be at a school board meeting it's more of a ongoing discussion and and we don't have to go by discussion items I have here that was just the starting point and so do we specific I mean we start talking talking about a capital projects levy or an operating referendum keeping them separate is there a sentiment that the board has as to which direction we're going I mean somewhere in there we've heard this two or three times now do you have a, like Lynn here pretty good financial person. Do you look at that and consider a building bond something we haven't really even brought up? Is that just something we're not even... I guess to me, you know, we've had a lot of discussion about steps, you know, and, and I think a building bond is going to be necessary in order for us to replace windows and concrete and those kinds of things. And I think we have to start somewhere. And I think that that facility assessment and reviewing that that Wood Seth did is is a good place to start. I think the operating referendum is probably, you know, getting close to a necessity, but you know, we don't know if it's gonna pass even if we do take it to the voters. And so we need to have a financial plan like Todd and Sheena worked on to do with or without that. You know, so that I think that long range financial plan was really important to see that and to see where we could get without it. But I also think there's a risk of that because I think that if our enrollment continues to drop, we could have, you know, either cutting a program, um, increasing class sizes. There's some real risks to the education system. And I, I think that. You know, it, it looks like to me that the smaller class sizes are more desirable for the teachers and probably for the for the students as well as the parents. And so I think that we need to look at what might happen, you know, if we, you know, if we run into a jam, you know, and Jeff had mentioned some of the things that an operating levy might include, you know, additional paras where we need them. Um, the class size, like I talked about, counseling, those kinds of things that, that the community thinks is important, that the staff within the school think are important. I think we need to respond to those. So are you saying do them separately or do them together? I think we should do them all together. You say all, all three. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, throw everything at the wall and see what passes kind mm -hmm. of thing? I mean, I'd be really surprised if this community would pass all three of those. Uh, and I would be too. But I think that if we get the information out for all three of them, 
I think that people can pick and choose what they would pass. Well, that's just my opinion, so. But if, they, if you're saying pick and choose, then it sounds like you want three Questions. Three questions. Yeah, three questions. So you want three questions? Yeah, three questions. Okay. Yeah, excuse me. We were, I didn't make that. I didn't make that clear. No, no, okay. no, no, no. There would be three questions, yeah. but we would take them all to the voters at the same time. Actually, I think we're all in agreement. I that's the the way the method I was leaning towards. The other yes. two were here. I wasn't leaning that way actually. I was looking <laughs> at the capital projects levy, just saying, okay, we put all our eggs in a basket, work really hard at it. You know, I, I'm thinking... And just put one up? Well, that was my thought, is it, just for the sake of the sanity of the uh, of the voting population, to have, asking them to digest all three, differentiate, and then mm -hmm. vote, it almost seems like it's random on their voting prospect again. I mean, it's taken us a while to get our arms around, okay, mm -hmm. what can I do with a... And I'm not opposed to that either, but, you know, to me, it's kind of like a... A feel for what you get for pe what people think in the community are think are more important. Is it a thirty year old building preserving that, or is it small class sizes? Is it small class sizes or counseling or those kinds of things? And that's you know, I mean, you think of like computer replacement. You know, we put all that stuff on hold, and you know, eventually those computers just outdate. You know, so there's lots of things that are are. To be considered, but what do we think as a community is most important? Well, if you present it to the community that way, right? I mean, yeah, that's a little difficult. Yeah. It's a little more long-winded, and it is. It's very, you know, it's very complex to make sure that everyone understands what each one is for. You know, and they are all more kind of tied together. Like if you have to take operating capital to fund the changing of the windows and then and every general fund. Uh, fund the windows, then, uh, then it's going to have to get cut from somewhere else. And that's a that's a chunk that has to exactly that you know yeah. I mean, basically, if if an operating or the the building bond does not pass, the windows as they fall apart are going to have to be replaced out of yep. operations. You know, so it's kind of a kind of a domino effect to your operations. But if you pass the capital projects levy, for instance, or a building right. bond, for uh -huh. instance, then assuming the Mike Reed question that those numbers are progressing the way they should, you know, this is an mm -hmm. accurate budget, but yep. we have that money to keep our class sizes small, and so you've got that, you're not dipping into that fund all mm -hmm. the time. I mean, yep. I think that's, I, I hope that's what the board is looking at, is a responsibility that we're throwing out there and mm -hmm. saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. There's tangible responsibility for this money, which is, you know, we're not just throwing it in your lap again. You yeah. know, we're saying, here it is. We need a new uh, tiller, or we need a new uh, roof. Roof, you know, things like that that come up, or that yeah. are in those with set, that with, with set. Report. Well, you know, I mean, the ones that have been mentioned are windows, bus, you know, the brickwork, the drives, and the sidewalks. And Carla mentioned the roof is another item. Buses, you know, so there's a lot of things that could go under that. Right, the ongoing building, technology costs. You know, you know under that building. Would the track yeah. fall under buildings, I assume? Yeah. Yeah, the track would be under the bond. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if the buses heard, can be too, right? The track has no. issues. They would be only yeah, under the cap. Uh, yeah. Portions of it, uh, there was a drain tile. I think it was when they put, they raised the, the football field. Well, that kind of created other problems. So the drain tile areas are sinking and we cannot have, uh, we cannot host a meet because the, it, it's a safety hazard is what they're saying. And I think there was, what do you may remember, I think there's two specific lines that I can think of. Is the outer two, outer two lanes? Two lanes you know, or, well, it's because of two spots. It's not the entire lane, it's two spots on those, on those outer lanes. Uh, and there's kind of the beginnings of a third. We uh, actually, uh, uh, I helped, uh, what's Katie, what's that class? Yeah, yes. what's, yeah, they helped me. What's the class name? The ship class. The what? The 
shop class? Case no, class? it wasn't the shop class. It was a technology it class. GT. I had I brought them oh, out. GT. Yeah, I brought them out with uh, the county's GPS survey, and they actually helped me go out and survey the track so that we could submit this data to uh, uh, a consultant. And and yeah, so that's a very large expense. So, with the technology, what's called, is that like the person that is in charge of technology, or just like computer replacement? I'll get Jeff on that one. I'm sorry. Does uh, the technology one, does that, does that fund Billy? Yes. Anything associated with technology, um, like our student data system synergy, um, the teachers in the high school use uh, Schoology, and why uh, even that? curriculum. Why do we have two separate? Um, because my daughter has Schoology, and then she no. has. That's a that's a principal question. Um, there's tools and things that the teachers like for communicating with the Schoology, but that's that's something you'd have to ask Mary. But but that would be something that a the capital projects levy would would cover. Um, so much of our curriculum now um, doesn't just come in a textbook. It's online technology type stuff. Um, it's very hard nowadays to teach without technology in right. education. No, I you know, so that yeah. part of but you want to know why we don't have a uniform. Have Two different forms. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. Because my daughter has, well, I turn it on this one. Now the teacher has to turn, yeah. take and go to this one to make it go mm -hmm. to this one to get onto the. And that's just A lot of it goes thing. back to COVID because we used to have computer labs um, where you'd have 30 computers in, a, in a, one room and they'd sign up to go use it. Now we have. Just we have one to one basically in the building for all the kids, um, so that was something. That's an example of COVID dollars coming in. This is what you need to do. You spend it. Now you have all this technology, and we had one technology person that couldn't keep up, so we had to hire an IT person to help support that. Because a computer, anyone that's been on a computer and doesn't work, very frustrating. So that's kind of how things kind of transpired to now where do we go back and have fewer t devices for the kids or do we continue to support that? And and Jeff, correct me on this, and I think the, one of the things that comes up with new software is I think one of them is the kids are using it to submit and I don't know how the teachers do it. And I think the other one could be the teachers are using that for the record, for the grading, and the book, and I Synergy takes care of all, all the attendance, lunch count, um, report cards, um, and there's other things. But it's mostly just the record keeping type piece of it, where the Schoology is actually teachers posting curriculum or lessons and kids can work, pull it off and work on it if they're at home or, or whatever. So that's kind of the difference. Um, so the different programs, but they're in and I so. really don't think there's a program that is a do all. Not that oh, there. there might yeah. be, but I mean, you know, it's just weird. It's just like, why do you? I always ask, what do you, what, what do you do? I have to do it this way, and then the teacher takes me this, this way. I'm like, what? Like, people ask me a long time ago. Yeah. But so then, with them having their separate little computers, because I heard from my daughter that some kids aren't so good to them. They do come back damaged. Can we not start charging mm -hmm. for that to yep. help with our costs? Yep. And that's another thing we're looking at is having more fees for kids to have access to technology. We also allow kids and parents, if they want to bring their own device, they, they can do that as well. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's just something else that, you know, 
there's a lot of abuse, mm, yeah. can we charge them? And then I just have another question, as Lynn said, um, sizes of classes that you think are okay. What size classes do you think would be okay? And what size don't you want to get to? What age are you talking yeah. about? Oh, high school. I guess. High school? Oh, I was. It depends on the class to, and depends uh, on the kids. Elementary. Yeah. Um, Thirty, thirty-five is not out of the question. Even elementary. I mean, in other locations, yeah. going thirty kids in elementary. Right. I think mean, mm -hmm. most of us here, uh, if you were up somewhere else, I mean, I guarantee I had twenty, thirty kids and going through elementary. And I can say, because I looked into this a little bit, um, the, there's been studies done, and if you can have the number 17 or less, there's a benefit. If you're at 19 or 20, you may as well go all the way to 30 because there's no there's no benefit to it. So, and, and in previous, uh, all this time, we've been really trying to have that, that 17 or less number, which is... is Kind of the Cadillac plan, and so most of our elementary classes are in the twenties. Yeah, yeah. I would say the seventeen to twenty-five would yeah. be. But, but again, it's five usually maximum twenty-five. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like to see classes more than twenty. Well, the problem is if yeah. you try and split a class with yeah. twenty, now you're yeah. down to ten kids in each class, and that's right. Not yeah. And different. I think some studies will show that two smaller classes aren't always beneficial. Yeah. So and that's my question there too, is like in the high school, let's say that there's a math class that the teacher is teaching only two kids. Yep. I don't know if we have that. I'm you don't sure. have that. No. With only my two daughter kids. has got yep. is one of those that is, has only two kids in class. Is it an elective or a higher level math class, I would assume? I couldn't tell you. That, that's where, at least from what I've seen, that, that's where they tend to be is where they're not your general class. They're an elective or a higher level or something to that effect. That would be a Mary Merchant. I don't know the, the exact in and outs of every mm -hmm. class. And yeah, so. I guess I don't know if it's a higher class or not. But so, when she says that, you know, they're done in 20 minutes because there's only two of them. Yeah. To say, why is there only two kids in this class? Like, but now that you say that, I wonder if it's not higher. It could very well could be. Mm -hmm. That answers my questions. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I have one more observation about this process here. Uh, referendum process. I spent a lot of time explaining to people um, about the difference in the operating money and the capital projects. Mm -hmm. so that's something that we probably should consider. You know, yeah. Making sure that the public knows and understands yeah. you know, the ramifications of either one. They say, I spent, I was over at the Williams Senior Center for lunch this week, and I could have held a seminar on this with 30 people mm -hmm. They were interested in that information. You betcha. Okay. Good. They are right. You know, some of them, some of them are farmers. Some of them are just having residences. But they all want to know yeah. what's this going to cost us. Mm -hmm. What's going to be the difference in the operating levy and the capital project money? I suppose. Uh, what do they get for their money? Got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That was my question: Is which one of these is going to cost the taxpayer the least? Is the bond going to be the cheapest way to go with the this? We had that, that last one, last meeting we had, he had the numbers based on the, the, the bond that we were trying to get each year. And I don't remember them off the top of my head, but I know that one of them there was on a, oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, that's the help. Uh, but they were picking like a $150,000 house for a round number. And I think they multiply. Touch me. Yeah, there's not a straight line. Um, so 
for the capital levy, lovely levy, pro, capital project levy. There we go. They were, uh, you're trying to raise $400,000 a year. And that would come out to on a, uh, on a $200,000 house. That'd be $87. Uh, their operating referendum, uh, it would increase our number up to 745, uh, dollars per kid that, that's that, that, that's the level we would be at that corresponds to three hundred thousand dollars and that would increase a two hundred thousand dollar house 161 dollars that's the one where it's only uh homestead homestead and commercial or tax uh, uh what's the called the other one's recreational properties and ag properties that get included in the and seasonal rec recreational are not included uh, the third one, the building bond, uh, we'd be looking at trying to raise $7 million and that uh, $200,000 house, that would cost $80. So in, uh, if you did all three of them, you would raise a $200,000 house, $328. And the reason the values are different, Glorianne, and this chart is available on I think online still, isn't it? Because you said the board packets were out there. Yeah. So these charts are available, but the difference being that there are different people, different groups being assessed those taxes. Uh, for instance, on the capital projects levy, which is the one I was sort of hawking here a minute ago, said I'd like the capital projects levy. And my thought is because everybody pays it, it's not just the homeowners or the uh, homestead credit people, but also seasonal rec people, you know, the guy who bought 80 acres of deer hunting land and put a fish house on it, he's still, you know, going to be responsible for some of that. It's not totally burdened by the local tax base. Uh, so there are differences there. And then the ag land also gets taxed. But like Mike points out, you know, in terms of, you know, I look at it from that perspective as a homeowner, I want everybody's property to support the school because, well, if you, if you hold that 80 acres sort of in reserve, you're not contributing you know, to the student population, you're not contributing to the job space, you know, and the least you could do possibly is contribute to the tax burden, you know, of the school. So that's why I look at it, but Mike will come, Mike Reed comes in in the last and says, hey, you know how hard it is to sell a house to a guy coming out of Edina because the first thing he looks at, for instance, is, you know, the tax base or one of the first things. So, you know, it inflates that sale potential or deflates that sale potential. So it's not like they're all comparatively the same in terms of what you're asking for. It's who's paying for it as well, if that makes sense. And that's where Woody, I think you probably got into your conversation because the Williams crowd, for instance, would have a lot of ag land, you know, represented there. So then commercial would be the same. They're their own yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they would be a, but commercial, commercial. I think commercial is everything. Commercial's yeah. involved in just like you would be as a homeowner. You're involved in everything. So we would pay three hundred and twenty-eight dollars on like at every two hundred thousand dollars, right? Roughly. On a two hundred thousand dollar house, you all three. You pay if, all if three. we if pass all, all three, all three of those, which is quite a. I mean. I again look at myself as a taxpayer again, and I don't think I could find it in my heart to pay all three. Those are using the high side value when they estimated those. Those are using yeah. what? The highest yeah. you would ask for. That's that's yeah, based that's, on seven million dollars. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. 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 But that's so those are just estimates based on the highest of yes, the Yes, if it's a bond it's it's they yeah, use net tax capacity. That's over every every month. Approximately, it didn't look like it was linear, so I'm not sure. How no, it's it's. Use. That would be like two hundred dollars more a year for us to pay taxes for my for us. For your house and your business. Right. Yeah. No, you'd have to look at the different line for the business. Yeah, there'd be a different valuation. You mean? Yeah. 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 The the valuation on the business is not the same as the house. Yeah. Okay. Is it less or more? Commercial. Commercial tax higher than higher. Than higher. Oh. So it would be a lot more than, yeah. you know? Like, so then I'm just going to be honest. I wouldn't vote for it then. If well, it was all three, I wouldn't vote for it because I don't want to pay. But it's all or like, nothing. You can vote for one. Right. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you wanted. You don't have to right. vote for all three. Right. But I mean, I'm just saying if I were 
to right. do it, I wouldn't vote for all three. You know, so if you put it all together, I'm just saying, if you put it all together, I think you would get less votes. Three different questions. Compared to yeah. three different three. No, I get it. But they all have that. Pay more yeah. taxes. And that is, but, is, but I get it. You know, yes. I, I mean, I understand that return of some money. Yeah. But voting. And I, there I didn't think of it like that. I thought it was more. Or the building. Is there a grant we'll there that we can get? Yeah. We're very good at looking <laughs> for grants and money. And you know so what I mean? And then I can see it. We've gone after yeah. the yeah. grants. Yeah. But I wouldn't get too worked up because we really do have to wait for figure out what the deficit numbers are for yeah. the, to see, and to see what we're actually going to ask for because numbers. those numbers are right. high. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but no, I'm just... You know what I mean? I'm so I really don't want to deter you by looking right. at those numbers. Right, but I'm just saying for what the numbers I'm looking at right now, if we put it all together from that standpoint, me as a business owner and a homeowner, that has 40 acres and our tax base is higher than $200,000 on just our post, let alone having five different properties for a business, it's very costly for... Yep. And I think that was Lynn's suggestion, don't let me put words in your mouth, right. but no, let's present exactly. all three, not, not the lump, but right. there are three separate line item questions on that ballot and you say, because now you've had Woody, you, you know, bought him lunch and said, Woody, go to the Williams Senior Center and disseminate the proper information. Those people come in and say, just like you did, this applies to me. I understand that we're really low on what we're trying to give out to our school at $24 per, per pupil unit when, for instance, Lancaster has a $1,300 per pupil unit comparison, you know, on a very similar, and I understand they have some wealthy, you know, farmers over there and they can probably can afford that better than we can but at the same time you do you present all three and then my argument was not really an argument do you present just one and try to do it really well and present it properly but I don't want to make the decision for you and that's what Lynn she sort of I think on your side on that let you make what decision you want about right. what taxes to support well and Corinne just mentioned um, she could speak for herself. <laughs> she just mentioned, you know, the fear of people thinking that maybe all three would pass. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, I've heard you know, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and I never I, even thought of that. And I think it's a yeah. legitimate concern, and I think it could be a deterrent from voting. You mean to vote for any of them? Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I think we have an obligation to get feedback and determine what do we need and just ask for what we need, mm -hmm. you know. And if we can pick through the building projects and identify those that we need to fix sooner than later and not have windows replaced over the next eight years to get it done, if that's a, what people would say they would support, then that's what we ask for. Um, I can't think of what else is in there. There might be some things in there that I think there's a bathroom in there over by the football field or something with that. There's, some that's, there's that that's yeah. something that there's been an app. People have brought that up a thousand times, and we've that is something that I would not recommend that we add showers and bathrooms over in the football field. You know, so I think that's the steps, the process that we need to go through. And I think if, to get through this, if we're going to do it in this fashion, I think we need to schedule another meeting and Just focus on that. one thing. Yeah. Get the information, identify what projects we want to move forward, and then do the next thing. I don't know if you were going out when I, when I said it, but uh, the way I see doing it, like uh, Todd had that very detailed expenditure and revenue thing. I'd like to see the, the actual dollars for our uh, expenditures for uh, fiscal year 23. And then we can gauge that based on his projection, and we should be able to come up with a pretty good idea of what we need to do work. Well, it would also be stuff that on that list would need to be accomplished in the next 10 years and stuff that would be able Could to be postponed. Delayed. Yeah. Because realistically, if we do this right, we should be going through this process again in a decade. 
right? I mean, we get those projects done, we hit the next 10 years, and we go back and say, okay, thank you, now we need this. Is the life of a bond 20 years or 10? They had it as 18 here. 18? Yeah. You know. And the other stuff is 10, you know, the, the operating levy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just couldn't remember that. Right. Yeah. How long was the operating levy? 18. Uh, not the operating ten. 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 Looks like about two million dollars worth of windows, cup point. Yep. Uh, roof. Yep. So the real, you know, mm. to keep the box in. I think that's realistic. There's a lot of, you know, brand new playground equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One point three million dollars to fix the track. You know. Yep. There's some easy decisions in my book. <laughs> Keep in mind, yeah. if you don't do the track, we won't have track. At least we can't host any meetings. I, I get it, but okay. mm -hmm. yeah. if you had to make our decisions, this is you know, right. like a couple million dollars there versus seven and a half million yep. of like imminent, probably structural things. Yep. I don't think that's a hard sell. Mm -hmm. Keep the building functionally mm -hmm. secure. That's about mm -hmm. half of what he projected. Yep. So that was 400000 uh, he was at seven million. Seven million for the building. For the <coughs> the seven million the is everything in there. Yeah. That was that's that's, that's everything that's it's in not, that plan. There's not other things that are needed, but yeah, yeah. yeah. it keeps the wind out of the, the rain out of the windows and stuff. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, it's, that's the prioritizing needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Well, should we start there with our next meeting? I think that would be good because we're over an hour. Yes. So I we'll think just go over the building was prioritized. Yeah. Okay. How's the school exhaustive? Every resource to try and find revenue for the house for. I get like I don't know the answer to this, but how many vacant acres is the school? I we've got school forest. Is school are you talking about school forest? forest. Um, Thank you. Three different locations. Little yeah. up in something, or why is that? I've never heard it discussed. Uh, that being done. Selling? Uh, it's not the school actually gets money uh, on some of them. That's not special. How much? Not all of it. It's the timber sales and part of that. I don't know how much it's. There's an account. Yeah. yeah. The money was supposed to be set aside uh, to the school first. Yep. Yeah. 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 We have like. Yeah. Almost thirty-two thousand dollars in there right now. Yeah, we got for logged off the one over in Pitt. You know, just recently we did. I think we twenty-seven thousand on that. But that those dollars were set aside, for set aside for education related to the school forest, and that goes back to the Bruce House bargain days. Now you're working on the school. We're talking twenty-seven thousand here, thirty-two thousand here. Yeah, we've talked about. Yeah, I thought there was something on the I don't know the exact term price on selling it. I imagine somewhere under $1,000. Yeah. Keep in mind, once you sell it, it's going. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've recognized that there's a benefit to our school chorus here. I mean, I think it's part of the the whole sort of culture of our school. But we do have a school forest that probably second to none in the state, quite honestly. I mean, whether it's in terms of size or in terms of, you know, the way it's being applied, but we get good value out of that, I think, at the moment. Yeah, I'm not into yeah, the There's a, a chunk of land up on six. Right. Six. Oh, board for an option. Oh. Fair enough. Yep. No, that's and true. And that is not school forest designation. And then there's some when land just south of town. We went through that. That's not school forest designation. Yeah, we went through a triage of properties here about what, Nick, five, ten years ago in the school forest situation, but we looked at them, I think it was when Reed McFarland no, was no. still around, but sold off, they had a, a bunch, just like you're saying, little one acre, two acres here, uh, The my daughter's living in the Wabonica school, you know, that was one of them, I think, that the school sold off, uh, but just trying to clean up, just like you said, stuff that we weren't using anyway, what do we sell, something right on the corner, uh, I think we just... For five hundred dollars oh, or something, but anyway, we cleaned it up. You know, yeah. trying to get yeah. just what you're saying. Might as well get some revenue out of it. But. I'm just talking about still deciding to touch the school. Obviously, yeah. I think it's beneficial to keep acres. That's 
Mr. Ryan, Mr. Wilford, and the staff of the Reverend Luamba, you have all this great commandments. Um, going into school. I guess not bringing in. I guess to answer your question, yes, we're aware of it, and we've considered it. I guess, in my opinion, we're not at a point where we should sell it off yet, but it's up for discussion. Yeah. Isn't it used? Doesn't the teachers actually use that and go out there? Yeah, the so one right the, here. The, the one right here. here, but also out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the I've, the I've never chaperoned that one. Yeah, and there. you planted so, trees out there. And yeah, stuff, yeah done right. that. that got logged off. That's the one we're talking about here just last year, mm -hmm. year and a half ago. You know, so it's providing an educational experience for sure. But we also have, you know, 900 million acres of state land here, too. Yeah. You can get that same experience no problem, but if you're different place than I guess it is all. It's a legitimate point if you got a half million dollars or more. I think we need to look into the legalities of creating revenue. Probably yeah, something there. There is, probably yeah, something I, there. there is a demand for a school forest. I think every school district has one in the state of Minnesota. They say we're all developed like way back when, and the whole idea, and that's why they're scattered all over the place, is when you had a school in pretty much every township. Uh, it, was, yeah, it was meant to fund the school with timber sales, is really what it was originally intended for. The school was in the center of the township, the rest of the township funded the school. Yeah. Park or whatever. Yep. Well, it's well, worth looking into yep. what the process would be to sell school property and what the value is. Well, when you think about how many schools there used to be in the county. Mm -hmm. Whenever that was established, there was a lot more schools. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Okay, then let's set another meeting Session and meeting wrap up. this one up. But you're gonna have a real hard education problem if you do all three of them. How are people gonna understand what the bond is for, what the operating, what the capital bond is? The land you asked that. <laughs> we've got a plan. We're going to put uh, either articles or uh, under a letter to the editor in the paper, uh, hopefully discussing all three of them in enough detail that it answers people's questions, or at least gets them at, uh, thinking about it, and then they can ask for details. Do you recall the last time we raised the per pupil, um, the superintendent? Went to meetings, the rotary meetings, yep. they had meetings at the senior center, they had meetings at the school, they had meetings everywhere. Um, 2007, yep. Steve Weimar. That's, that's, that well, must have been Ralph. No. Steve Weimar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Steve did it? But Steve I think it was 2007 was the year that you were remembering, yeah. Okay. And Connie Nelson also did that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was for the that was for when they did the improvement in the, the football field and those kinds of things. Okay. Yeah, that is and I think Steve Wymore was the uh, per student. But you're I saying think. there were school officials, school people, whether it was mm -hmm. superintendents or teachers or well, like what he said, go to the Brink Center or something. Yeah. Or any gather, large gathering of people, that would be a good opportunity. Actually, I didn't understand the people until I went to go three meetings. And, and I saw, you know, what other places had, mm -hmm. for example, Badger, and how long it had been since it was raised, what we used the money for. I yep. think it was very educational. So maybe some of people. Yeah. Well, that's part of the plan that we're working on. But first, we need to decide what questions we're going to ask, probably. <laughs> well, how much we're going to ask. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, but once we get the details pounded out, then yes, we will have to present it to the public and try and sell it. I don't remember it being raised by $24 per group. I'm going to go back and look at that. Because that was the last time uh, I think the total is seven, and don't quote me on the exact dollar amounts. I mean, let's just say seven hundred twenty-four dollars. Um, and then the let don't I don't remember what it was. Um, part of that, let's say three hundred dollars, 
went to what's called LOR, Local Operating Revenue, a referendum, which is allows the board to make that approval. Um, so then, the, so the LOR was 300, and the 424 was now that's that's the operating levy piece of it. That's the the voter approved. And a few years ago, they changed it again and took $300 and put it under LOR. So now the voter approved is the $24. Thank you for reminding me of this folder. So, yeah, this is statewide. So, so the actual dollar tax per pupil unit is, as far as the operating levy, could be, you could say it's 744. But when we compare other districts that we're talking about, the same thing happened to them. So they have that $700 that is now board controlled, and plus the dollars that match show up for some of those districts like Lancaster or whatever. That's what the voters approve. So. What's a ballpark number for total revenue for the school per year? Is it six million? Six, Between six seven and seven million, million roughly. You get $7,200 per kid. The APU is what they call it, an average pupil unit or something. Adjusted right? pupil Adjusted unit. Pupil unit. <laughs> How many kids do you have? Four, four twenty-nine, four twenty-eight. Oh, drop. Okay. Four twenty-seven. It's better than Robinson built the school. Yeah. It was like I think it's twelve, twelve or thirteen hundred. When I started here in '95, there was over eight hundred kids, three sections. Yeah. Well, at the time they weren't projecting the drop quite so much. I saw the original. Uh, documents and they were projecting an increase in, in kids and yeah. went the other way. But we've done a good job of utilizing the building. We have four daycares okay. in the building. So. And do the daycares pay uh, yeah. a stipend? It's, they, they pay it's a, it's a, it's a nominal fee. It's, it's, it's a nominal, expensive. it's a hundred and some dollars a month. Um, but it provides a service to the community. Um, we just had to upgrade some fire alarms and... But the school didn't pay for that? No. The, we had the county, we had lots of people show up that paid for that extra yeah, cost. It was about 10000 Yeah. Eight. And also, yeah. Just to finish my thought, what, what is our deficit right now? I mean, the the 102000 roughly is... This year, but we're still going to be behind on that same rate. Um, make changes. Yeah, we did some major cuts, and I don't have it right in front of me. So it takes, uh, it's about 15 grand a year per student in this facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. And that's, yep. that, yeah, that's actually the state, uh, that's actually pretty good. Um, the average was $17. Was it $17,000? Or $17,000. Yeah. Or we're relatively efficient, if you can believe that. But, uh, yeah. the, the surprising, you would not believe, you need to get on the finance, you need to run for county, uh, for, uh, for, for be a board member, get on the finance committee, and you'll find out that seven million, that's more than the county's budget, and our discretionary funds, it's in thousands, maybe tens of thousands, maybe even up to a hundred thousand, very little discretionary funding. The, 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 most of it is already spent as soon as you get it. And then it's salaries and operating uh, electricity and everything else. So, so yeah. And they get a big part of it. It's just you have overbuilt facility for the yeah, students. So yeah, that, that's part of it. Because mm -hmm. in my mind, I think if I, if I go hire a good teacher somewhere, I say, can you handle 20 students? I'll give you three hundred thousand a year in your budget to take care of. Yeah. Pretty big deal, isn't it? And as you're getting hundred grand a year to only teach twenty kids, and yeah. then two hundred thousand, you know, it's just got out of control. You know, I get it. It's expensive to keep these buildings. Yep, it's a big number. And plus, their transportation is another huge cost. Yeah, the number of miles we put on to the building's the actually kids. not as much as you might think out of that that piece of pie. Where do most of the kids go? Pardon me? Where are most of the kids going that we're losing here? The 
is it just a um, shrinking community overall? Or? Our community is aging. And yeah. Some, yeah. Homeschooling and war room. Yeah. Is really well, is. we used yeah. to have a few more that doesn't yeah. happen anymore. Well, but the, the in and out yeah. is effectively a wash. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we're losing 15 a year elsewhere and not getting them back. We're getting kids back from those communities too, which effectively wash. I don't have numbers in front of me, but we asked them last year. And it wasn't yeah. like 14 left, and we got 13 in, or something like that. It's basically a wash. No. I can bring you the numbers. It's the bigger. It's kind of bigger fear as you lose another 50 kids. But I think it's regional. It's a big deal. I think most districts, there might be some exceptions that are running into the problem. Young people need to start breathing in this country. Well, yeah. I mean, you saw it happen with Solvay, you know, sold out to A&I. I mean, it changed the dynamic of the community in terms of number but of kids a, over here. It was a big drop. It's a domino effect, though. People aren't having kids because there's not enough daycare. You know, and it's costly, and it's, you know. Minnesota just put out a map, county by county, from when COVID hit, population change. Lake Lewis County got hit by the hardest with 3% loss. But your major cities gained population. You know, it just took the rural areas and commingled them even further. But there's only like three counties that got the 3% or greater loss in COVID. They were one of them. Now, the ironic part is okay, so you're saying, and I know where you were going with, but I said at the previous one where we need to try and entice people to come over here and stuff like that. Well, how do you do that? Well, you have a nice building. You have as best teachers you can you can get and everything else. Well, what does that take? That takes funding. So it's a it's a vicious circle. And you're and I think you were also the one who had mentioned uh, once about setting money aside for the roof since it's roughly every ten years. And again, that's that's part of it. Uh, there is very little discretionary funding with the current budget, and that's also why you got to go for. We have to ask for more money and get a referendum, and then maybe we could set money aside. So. Well, maybe or at the next meeting, can you bring like how many kids are in each class, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Probably got that from the last board. Yeah, I was gonna say from the last meeting. Oh, I was in here. So, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. He he gives us that though every week or every month. Yeah. No, you want you want you want just enrollment numbers or each classroom, each classroom, each like math class, English seven. No, like kindergarten through. Oh, okay. Oh, yep. Yeah, we do that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I can get to that. Yep. I'm just out of curiosity, you know, how much, you know, say, you know, I'm just using numbers. Mm -hmm. There's 80 kids in this class this year, but next year there's only 60, and no. then the next year there's only 50. That's exactly what's happened. Yep. Right. You and know what, what I mean? Yep. So then but you look at the, the pre-K or the, you know, you yep. look at who's coming in and who's graduating. Yep. So if we... Great graph that shows mm -hmm. the, yep. the progression all the way through. I can get that for you. Thank you. Yep. What, what hurts a little school like us is you have a senior class of 40 that graduates, and then you look at your kindergarten class, and there's 22. Right. You know, and that's, it's just, it's like this every year, you know, and sometimes you're, you have, a, I don't know, the weather or something, and you get a few years where there's 35 or 36 kids steady, but it's, it's what hits a little district is those enrollment changes because right. 15,000 you lose 10 kids that's $150,000 out of your your budget Absolutely. that you, you well know, an example is I worked at the hospital for many years and when I first started working at the hospital there would be almost 80 births a year and by the time I left there was less than 30 and so some people were going other places to deliver their babies and some was just that simply there was not as many births Hey, you, you know, you're preaching to the choir, so, you know, just like us, having a cabin business, you know, it's just like from one year to the next, you don't know yeah. where you're going to be. 
And so, no, I, I totally get that. I'm only 10 percent. I was just talking about the population yeah. shift. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. No, no, I get it. So should we set it? Anything else? To, should we set a date? Yeah, or? set a date. After the other meeting, same time. So what other meeting? Oh, that's the, uh, that's next month. Sorry, the one we just had, May 9th. Yeah, apologize. Is there a meeting on May 9th? The buildings and grounds we just had. Oh, five, 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 five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. On the eighteenth. You're talking? Yeah. Eighteenth. Yeah, five thirty should work. Okay. Thursday, April 18th. Another working session. Right? It's a working session. It'll be very informal like this. I'm going to get complaints because all the comments people won't hear when it's streamed. So I might, this is what we're going to do. I might stick some mics over by people. So when you're asking questions, making comments, people at home can hear it. So. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Jeff.